Newton's law of cooling or heating states that the rate at which the temperature of an object changes is directly proportional to the difference in the temperature of the object and that of the surrounding medium. From that, we're going to get our differential equation. The information that's after this is to help us figure out what the constants are and to help us, uh, and, and then we're going to get a question that we have to answer. It says the thermometer is taken from the patio where the temperature is 45 degrees into a room where the temperature is 72 degrees. After one minute, the thermometer read 57 degrees. How long did it take the thermometer to reach 66 degrees? First step, set up the differential equation. We need a formula y that, that measures the temperature as a function of time. It's the temperature of the thermometer, but we're going to start at the moment where, it's, where it enters the room at. So T will be the minutes uh, spent in the room. Then the derivative, how this function changes, is what we're interested in. dy dt is the change in temperature of the thermometer with respect to time. And so, when the problem reads the rate at which the temperature of an object changes, that there is the derivative. dy dt is, that's going to be equals, directly proportional. When something is directly proportional to something else, if A is directly proportional to B, then you are able to write A as some constant K times B. And so dy dt is going to be some constant K times what, what's to come after the words directly proportional. And here we have a difference. Difference between two temperatures, the temperature of the object, that's Y, and then the temperature of the surrounding medium. That's the, like the room temperature. And for us, that's a constant. Um, the room temperature is uh, 72 degrees. The difference there. So we get this equation. dy dt is k times y minus 72. All right, great. Now, um, when, the, when it was brought into the room, the thermometer read 45 degrees. But well, that's an initial condition. When t is 0, y is 45. So the setup is done. Well, we just have to solve this differential equation. We'll do that. We'll start that on the next slide. We have dy dt is k times y minus 72, the quantity. And y of 0 is 45. Let's separate the variables. Leave the k where it's at. We want to get the y and dy on the left-hand side and the t and dt on the right-hand side. Any t's or dt's on the right-hand side. So we're going to leave the k where it's at. This y minus 72 can't be on the right-hand side. The dt can't be on the left-hand side. So we multiply by dt over y minus 72. What that does for you is that will clear out the dt on the left-hand side and the y minus 72 from the right-hand side, thus giving you exactly the separation you need. Okay, great. Now what? Well, after you separate the variables, you're supposed to integrate both sides. So let's do that. Let's integrate the left and integrate the right. The left hand will be the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 72, and the right hand side will be kt plus a constant. All right, so we're almost done. Next step would be to find out what these constants are. We have a constant c, a constant k. We have to go get these guys. The information that's in the problem helps you solve it. This initial condition helps you find out what C is. <clears throat> when we plug in 0 and Y being 45, then all that's left is C. And so 45 replaced the Y, 0 replaced the T, 
and this will zero out. 45 minus 72, we get 27. It's a negative 27, but we have absolute values there. So C is the natural log of 27. Immediately just put that back in to replace your C. And next we're going to go after the K. We had another condition. We said after a minute, we knew that the temperature rose to 57 degrees. So now we can plug that in. When T is 1, Y is 57, and we'll get the K. So 57 minus 72, an absolute value inside of a log, is K plus the log of 27. When you subtract these, you get 15. And we'll shift the log of 27 over by subtracting it. But you have a log minus a log, you can combine them into one log. And these guys share something in common, we can go ahead and reduce. We divide by 3. And then leave us with the natural log of 5 ninths. So we have the K. We have the C. So we have Y as a function of T. Maybe it's not written explicitly, but you give me a T, I'll be able to spit out a Y. The question doesn't ask for Y as a function of T, so we don't actually have to do that algebra. Let's see what the question is asking. How long did it take the thermometer to reach 66 degrees? So 66 is a Y, and how long we want to find out what T is. So let's solve the problem. When Y is 66, what is T? 66, take away 72. Okay, that gives you a 6 on, on, you know, ab after absolute value. Shift to 27 over to the other side. And we have that same process of combining these into 1. And then we could reduce again and call that 2 ninths. We'll divide. This is just a constant here. Log of 5 ninths is a constant. So we'll divide by it. And that is the actual value of time t. And we can go to a calculator to get the approximation. It turns out that it's about 2.56 minutes until the thermometer rises to a temperature of 66 degrees. Okay, great.